We've seen some incredible videos of advanced humanoid robots recently. Machines like the Unitree H1 that can walk, run, show some impressive feats of agility, and sometimes moves that look straight out of a karate scene. So when footage suddenly emerges showing one of these highly capable robots, the kind you've seen looking so controlled, now violently thrashing, its limbs flailing, seeming completely out of control, all your mind naturally leaps. So the terrifying glitch is a new combat maneuver gone wrong, or is a robot uprising kicking off a lot sooner than we thought? Is Skynet upon us? That unsettling footage is real, and while it's easy to let your imagination run wild, what actually caused this humanoid robot to lose its composure is far more fascinating and incredibly revealing. Sticking around to understand the real reason will give you crucial insight, a better lens through which to view all future robotics news, and separate the sensational from the scientific reality. This understanding will generally help you make sense of where this technology is headed. My name is Brogan Brad, and I've spent over a decade as a robotics design and technology educator. I've seen countless machines, from student projects to, to sophisticated systems, exhibit behaviors that seem puzzling at first, but almost always have a logical and often overlooked explanation. So in this video, we're going to break down the video, then we'll dive into some of the initial theories that erupted online, from the dramatic to the more technically plausible, now, to date, Unitree has yet to release a statement, despite many articles online saying they have. But that said, I'm going to tell you what the most likely explanation is and what this bizarre incident tells us about the true state and challenges of modern robotics. All right, let's set the scene. Unitree H1 is in what looks like a testing facility. It's upright, hanging beside an engineer, and it's connected via a safety tether from around its head. Still, and then we see the engineer here command on his computer, and it slowly starts to get up and move before starts jerking violently. His limbs are flailing, legs are kicking, torso's twisting. It looks completely out of control. Like it's trying to find a rematch with Bruce. Thankfully, the tether keeps her falling over, but it's a chaotic and slightly unsettling scene. Understandably, people have been going wild with speculation. So what could have caused this? Let's take a look at a few of those possibilities. The answers are resounding no. We are nowhere near that level of artificial intelligence. Robots, even sophisticated ones, operate based on complex algorithms and programming. They don't have desires, emotions, or the capacity for spontaneous rebellion. So it's a fun theory to joke about with your buddies, but let's move on to some more grounded explanations. This scenario is very familiar to anyone who's ever developed robots. When engineers are building or testing a robot, they often need to test individual motors and joints to make sure they're working correctly, calibrated properly, and can move their full range of motion. You might write a small piece of code to say, move one leg back and forth. Now imagine a simple mistake. Type one of the code, initializing the wrong motors, selecting the wrong test routine, or an error in how the test sequence was initiated. Instead of it activating just one joint, what the command accidentally told the multiple joints or even all the joints to execute a test motion simultaneously or go to extreme positions. The result will be a sudden burst of uncoordinated movement across the entire robot. Pretty much what you exactly saw. This kind of oops that wasn't supposed to happen moment is a rite of passage in your robotics development. You're running a test to try and make a finger wiggle and suddenly the whole arm is trying to chop some onions. It happens. Sometimes the simplest explanation is most likely. Robots are controlled by millions of lines of code and where there's code, there can be bugs. Software glitch could manifest in countless ways. A miscalculation in the complex algorithms that govern its balance of movement a conflict between different software modules trying to control the same hardware, perhaps some garbage sensor data sending garbage outputs to a critical variable, leading to chaotic outputs to the motors. Think of it like when your computer freezes or an app on your phone crashes. It's frustrating, but it's a fundamental reality of working with complex software. An unhandled error, a logical flaw in the code, and things can go sideways fast. So those are some of the plausible and some not so plausible theories. But what do I think the most likely reason is? It's like the robot didn't malfunction in any way you may fear, like a critical system failure. Instead, the H1 was likely attempting to maintain its balance in unfamiliar conditions. The key here is that the robot is equipped with a stabilization system designed to help it adjust to shifts in posture or the type of terrain that it's on. And the culprit? Ironically, it was like that safety tether, the one that attached it to its head. The robot's stabilization algorithms may not have been designed to handle restrictions from a fixed point at its head, and it likely interpreted that tether as a destabilizing force. So at first, the H1 tried to correct its posture with small movements, but because it couldn't resolve the problem, 
that tether's influence. Its movements became sharper and more exaggerated in an attempt to break free from this perceived constraint. So let's break that down a little bit further because it's a great insight in the challenges of robotics. Humanoid robots are incredible results of years of engineering designed to mimic human movement and balance. Their controlled algorithms are incredibly complex, constantly taking in sensor data from their feet, joints, and turtle gyroscopes, making tiny adjustments to stay upright and move smoothly. These algorithms are generally built on the physics of an unconstrained body. Think about it. You balance by subtly shifting your weight using your feet as a base of support, with gravity acting on your whole body. Now introduce that tether, pulling or restricting it for the robot's head. This is a highly unusual situation for a system that's designed to balance itself from the ground up. The robot's algorithms, which are constantly trying to keep its center of mass perfectly balanced over its feet, suddenly encounter this persistent external force that they weren't explicitly programmed to understand or handle in that specific way. When the robot interpreted the tether as a destabilizing force, it means the robot's sensors recognized the pull from the tether and its programming classified that input as something that was trying to throw it off balance. Picture this. You're walking along perfectly fine and suddenly somebody starts pulling upwards on your hair. Your immediate instinctive reaction would be to resist that. Try and plant your feet, maybe bend your knees to counteract that unexpected pull. The robot's doing something conceptually similar, but its instincts are lines of code. The problem is, its usual repertoire of balance corrections, small shifts in weight, and slight joint adjustments wouldn't work against this condition. Unfamiliar pulling constraints from above. So it escalated. Tried a small correction. That didn't fix the force. So the algorithm commands a bigger correction. That still doesn't work. So this creates a kind of feedback loop. The robot perceives a problem, tries to fix it. Fix doesn't work because the nature of the problem is outside its normal operating parameters. So it tries an even more aggressive fix. This leads to increasingly wild flailing movements that we saw. It's not thinking in a human sense. It's just its control system is following program logic to an extreme, trying to resolve an input that it can't make sense of through its normal balancing strategies. This whole incident, while looking alarming, is actually a fantastic opportunity for robotics engineers. It perfectly illustrates what's known as an edge case, a situation that occurs at extreme operating parameters something that designers might not have fully anticipated or programmed a specific graceful response for. Even safety equipment like a tether can introduce those unexpected variables. And this isn't unique to advanced humanoids. In all forms of robotics, even in student competitions like FTC or FRC, we see robots behave perfectly in a controlled lab, but then struggle under slightly different conditions at an event. Different lighting, slightly uneven surface, or an unexpected bump from another robot. Adapting to the real, messy, unpredictable world is one of the biggest challenges in robotics. And this incident is just a very public, very dramatic example of that fundamental challenge. So no, this wasn't the beginning of Skynet. It wasn't a robot deciding it hated its job. It was a very complex machine encountering a situation its current programming wasn't perfectly equipped to handle gracefully, especially with a constraint applied in an unusual way. The good news is that every time this happens, engineers learn a tremendous amount. They can go back, analyze that data, refine the algorithms, and make the next generation of robots even more robust and adaptable. These moments, even the chaotic ones, are a crucial step forward in robotics development. So the real reason of the flailing Unitree H1 isn't so much a malfunction, it is a fascinating case study in the complexities of robot control and how these machines interact with the unexpected real-world, test-world constraints. It's a reminder that creating truly intelligent and adaptable machines is an ongoing journey, filled with trial, error, and a lot of learning. Thanks for watching, and best of luck on your next robotics project.